The kilogram or kilogram symbol, kilogram is the base unit of mass in the International System of Units SI. Until the 20th of May 2019, it remains defined by a platinum alloy cylinder, the International Prototype Kilogram, informally Le Grand K or IPK, manufactured in 1889 and carefully stored in Saint Cloud, a suburb of Paris. After the 20th of May, it will be defined in terms of fundamental physical constants. The kilogram was originally defined as the mass of a liter cubic decimeter of water. That was an inconvenient quantity to precisely replicate, so in 1799 a platinum artifact was fashioned to define the kilogram. That artifact, and the later IPK, have been the standard of the unit of mass for the metric system ever since. In spite of best efforts to maintain it, the IPK has diverged from its replicas by approximately 50 micrograms since their manufacture late in the 19th century. This led to efforts to develop measurement technology precise enough to allow replacing the kilogram artifact with a definition based directly on physical phenomena, a process which is scheduled to finally take place in 2019. The new definition is based on invariant constants of nature, in particular the Planck constant which will change to being defined rather than measured, thereby fixing the value of the kilogram in terms of the second and the meter, and eliminating the need for the IPK. The new definition was approved by the General Conference on Weights and Measures CGPM on 16 November 2018. The Planck constant relates a light particle's energy, and hence mass, to its frequency. The new definition only became possible when instruments were devised to measure the Planck constant with sufficient accuracy based on the IPK definition of the kilogram. Topic: <laughs> Definition. The gram, 1/1000th one of a kilogram, was provisionally defined in 1795 as the mass of 1 cubic centimeter of water at the melting point of ice. The final kilogram, manufactured as a prototype in 1799 and from which the International Prototype Kilogram IPK was derived in 1875, had a mass equal to the mass of one cubic decimeter of water under atmospheric pressure and at the temperature of its maximum density, which is approximately 4 degrees Celsius. The kilogram is the only named SI unit with an SI prefix kilo as part of its name. Until the 2019 redefinition of SI base units, it was also the last SI unit that was still directly defined by an artifact rather than a fundamental physical property that could be independently reproduced in different laboratories. Three other base units CD, A, mole, and 17 derived units N, Pa, J, W, C, V, F, Omega, S, W, B, T, H, Cat, G, Y, S, V, L, M, L, X in the SI system are defined in relation to the kilogram, and thus its stability is important. The definitions of only eight other named SI units do not depend on the kilogram, those of temperature K, degree C, time and frequency S, H, Z, B, Q, length M, and angle rad, senior. .The IPK is rarely used or handled. Copies of the IPK kept by national metrology laboratories around the world were compared with the IPK in 1889, 1948, and 1989 to provide traceability of measurements of mass anywhere in the world back to the IPK. The International Prototype Kilogram was commissioned by the General Conference on Weights and Measures CGPM under the authority of the Meter Convention 1875, and in the custody of the International Bureau of Weights and Measures BIPM who hold it on behalf of the CGPM. After the International Prototype Kilogram had been found to vary in mass over time relative to its reproductions, the International Committee for Weights and Measures CIPM recommended in 2005 that the kilogram be redefined in terms of a fundamental constant of nature. At its 2011 meeting, the CGPM agreed in principle that the kilogram should be redefined in terms of the Planck constant, H. The decision was originally deferred until 2014, in 2014 it was deferred again until the next meeting. CIPM has proposed revised definitions of the SI base units, for consideration at the 26th CGPM. The formal vote, which took place on 16 November 2018, approved the change, with the new definitions coming into force on 20 May 2019. The accepted redefinition defines the Planck constant as exactly 6.62607015 times 10 minus 34 kilograms m2s minus 1, thereby defining the kilogram in terms of the second and the meter. 
Since the meter is defined as a time fraction of the speed of light in vacuum, then the kilogram is defined in terms of the time only. The avoirdupois or international pound, used in both the imperial and U.S. customary systems, is now defined in terms of the kilogram. Other traditional units of weight and mass around the world are now also defined in terms of the kilogram, making the kilogram the primary standard for virtually all units of mass on Earth. Name and terminology The word kilogram or kilogram is derived from the French kilogram, which itself was a learned coinage, prefixing the Greek stem of chilioi kilioi, a thousand, to gramma, a late Latin term for a small weight, itself from Greek gramma. The word kilogram was written into French law in 1795, in the decree of 18 germinal, which revised the older system of units introduced by the French National Convention in 1793, where the gravit had been defined as weight poids of a cubic centimeter of water, equal to one one thousandth of a grave. In the decree of 1795, the term gram thus replaced gravit, and kilogram replaced grave. The French spelling was adopted in Great Britain when the word was used for the first time in English in 1795, with the spelling kilogram being adopted in the United States. In the United Kingdom both spellings are used, with kilogram, having become by far the more common. UK law regulating the units to be used when trading by weight or measure does not prevent the use of either spelling. In the 19th century the French word kilo, a shortening of kilogram, was imported into the English language where it has been used to mean both kilogram and kilometre. While kilo is acceptable in many generalist texts, for example The Economist, its use is typically considered inappropriate in certain applications including scientific, technical and legal writing, where authors should adhere strictly to SI nomenclature. When the United States Congress gave the metric system legal status in 1866, it permitted the use of the word kilo as an alternative to the word kilogram, but in 1990 revoked the status of the word kilo. During the 19th century, the standard system of metric units was the centimeter gram second system of units, treating the gram as the fundamental unit of mass and the kilogram simply as a derived unit. In 1901, however, following the discoveries by James Clerk Maxwell to the effect that electric measurements could not be explained in terms of the three fundamental units of length, mass and time, Giovanni Giorgi proposed a new standard system that would include a fourth fundamental unit to measure quantities in electromagnetism. In 1935 this was adopted by the IEC as the Giorgi system, now also known as MKS system and in 1946 the CIPM approved a proposal to adopt the ampere as the electromagnetic unit of the MKSA system. In 1948 the CGPM commissioned the CIPM to make recommendations for a single practical system of units of measurement, suitable for adoption by all countries adhering to the meter convention. This led to the launch of SI in 1960 and the subsequent publication of the SI brochure which stated that, it is not permissible to use abbreviations for unit symbols or unit names. The CGS and MKS systems co-existed during much of the early to mid-20th century, but as a result of the decision to adopt the Georgie system as the international system of units in 1960, the kilogram is now the SI base unit for mass, while the definition of the gram is derived from that of the kilogram. Mass and weight The kilogram is a unit of mass, a property corresponding to the common perception of how heavy an object is. Mass is an inertial property, that is, it is related to the tendency of an object at rest to remain at rest, or if in motion to remain in motion at a constant velocity, unless acted upon by a force. While the weight of an object is dependent on the strength of the local gravitational field, the mass of an object is independent of gravity, as mass is a measure of the quantity of matter. Accordingly, for astronauts in microgravity, no effort is required to hold objects off the cabin floor, they are weightless. However, since objects in microgravity still retain their mass and inertia, an astronaut must exert 10 times as much force to accelerate a 10-kilogram object at the same rate as a 1-kilogram object. 
Because at any given point on Earth the weight of an object is proportional to its mass, the mass of an object in kilograms is usually measured by comparing its weight to the weight of a standard mass, whose mass is known in kilograms, using a device called a weighing scale. The ratio of the force of gravity on the two objects, measured by the scale, is equal to the ratio of their masses. <laughs> Kilogram day archives On April 7, 1795, the gram was decreed in France to be the absolute weight of a volume of pure water equal to the cube of the hundredth part of the meter, and at the temperature of melting ice. Since trade and commerce typically involve items significantly more massive than one gram, and since a mass standard made of water would be inconvenient and unstable, the regulation of commerce necessitated the manufacture of a practical realization of the water-based definition of mass. Accordingly, a provisional mass standard was made as a single piece, metallic artifact 1,000 times as massive as the gram. The kilogram. At the same time, work was commissioned to precisely determine the mass of a cubic decimeter one liter of water. Although the decreed definition of the kilogram specified water at zero degrees Celsius—its highly stable temperature point, the French chemist Louis Lefebvre Ginot and the Italian naturalist Giovanni Fabroni after several years of research chose to redefine the standard in 1799 to water's most stable density point, the temperature at which water reaches maximum density, which was measured at the time as 4 degrees Celsius. They concluded that one cubic decimeter of water at its maximum density was equal to 99.9265% of the target mass of the provisional kilogram standard made four years earlier. That same year, 1799, an all-platinum kilogram prototype was fabricated with the objective that it would equal, as close as was scientifically feasible for the day, the mass of one cubic decimeter of water at 4 degrees Celsius. The prototype was presented to the Archives of the Republic in June and on December 10, 1799, the prototype was formally ratified as the Kilogram Day Archives, kilogram of the archives and the kilogram was defined as being equal to its mass. This standard stood for the next 90 years. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> International prototype of the kilogram. Since 1889, the magnitude of the kilogram has been defined as the mass of an object called the international prototype of the kilogram, often referred to in the professional metrology world as the IPK. The IPK is made of a platinum alloy known as PT10IR, which is 90% platinum and 10% iridium by mass, and is machined into a right circular cylinder, height equals diameter of about 39 mm to minimize its surface area. The addition of 10% iridium improved upon the all-platinum kilogram of the archives by greatly increasing hardness while still retaining platinum's many virtues, extreme resistance to oxidation, extremely high density almost twice as dense as lead and more than 21 times as dense as water, satisfactory electrical and thermal conductivities, and low magnetic susceptibility. The IPK and its six sister copies are stored at the International Bureau of Weights and Measures known by its French language initials BIPM in an environmentally monitored safe in the lower vault located in the basement of the BIPM's Pavillon de Bretoy in Saint Cloud on the outskirts of Paris see external images, below, for photographs. Three independently controlled keys are required to open the vault. Official copies of the IPK were made available to other nations to serve as their national standards. These are compared to the IPK roughly every 40 years, thereby providing traceability of local measurements back to the IPK. The meter convention was signed on May 20, 1875 and further formalized the metric system a predecessor to the SI, quickly leading to the production of the IPK. The IPK is one of three cylinders made in 1879 by Johnson Mathey, which continues to manufacture nearly all of the national prototypes today. In 1883, the mass of the IPK was found to be indistinguishable from that of the Kilogram Day archives made 84 years prior, and was formally ratified as the kilogram by the first CGPM in 1889. Modern measurements of Vienna Standard Mean Ocean Water, which is pure distilled water with an isotopic composition representative of the average of the world's oceans, show that it has a density of 0.999975 plus or minus 0.00000. 
kg per liter at its point of maximum density 3.984 degrees Celsius under one standard atmosphere 101,325 pascals or 760 torr of pressure. Thus, a cubic decimeter of water at its point of maximum density is only 25 parts per million less massive than the IPK, that is to say, the 25 mg difference shows that the scientists over 219 years ago managed to make the mass of the kilogram of the archives equal that of a cubic decimeter of water at 4 degrees Celsius, with a margin of error at most within the mass of a single excess grain of rice. Copies of the International Prototype Kilogram The various copies of the International Prototype Kilogram are given the following designations in the literature. The IPK itself, stored in the BIPM's vault in St. Cloud, France. Six sister copies, K1, 7, 8, 41, 32, 43 and 47. Stored in the same vault at the BIPM. 10 working copies, 8, 9, 31, 42 feet, 63, 77, 88, 91, and 650 for routine use and 2, 25 and 73 for special use. Kept in the BIPM's calibration laboratory in St. Cloud, France. National prototypes, stored in Argentina 30, Australia 44 and 87, Austria 49, Belgium 28 and 37, Brazil 66, Canada 50 and 74, China 60 and 64, 75 in Hong Kong, Czech Republic 67, Denmark 48, Egypt 58, Finland 23, France 35, Germany 52, 55 and 70, Hungary 16, India 57, Indonesia 46, Israel 71, Italy 5 and 76, Japan 6, 30, 94 and E59, Kazakhstan, Kenya 95, Mexico 21, 90 and 96, Netherlands 53, North Korea 68, Norway 36, Pakistan 93, Poland 51, Portugal 69, Romania 2, Russia 12 and 26, Serbia 11 and 29, Singapore 83, Slovakia 40 one and 65 South Africa 56 South Korea 39 72 and 84 Spain 24 and 3 Sweden 40 and 86 Switzerland 38 and 89 Taiwan 78 Thailand 80 Turkey 54 United Kingdom 18 81 and 82 and the United States 24 79 85 and 92 some additional copies held by non-national organizations, such as the French Academy of Sciences in Paris 34 and the Istituto di Metrologia G. Colonetti in Turin 62. <inaudible> <inaudible> Stability of the international prototype kilogram By definition, the error in the measured value of the IPK's mass is exactly zero, the mass of the IPK is the kilogram. However, any changes in the IPK's mass over time can be deduced by comparing its mass to that of its official copies stored throughout the world, a rarely undertaken process called periodic verification. The only three verifications occurred in 1889, 1948, and 1989. For instance, the U.S. owns four 90% platinum, 10% iridium PT10IR kilogram standards, two of which, K4 and K20, are from the original batch of 40 replicas delivered in 1884. The K20 prototype was designated as the primary national standard of mass for the U.S. Both of these, as well as those from other nations, are periodically returned to the BIPM for verification. Great care is exercised when transporting prototypes. In 1984, the K4 and K20 prototypes were hand-carried in the passenger section of separate commercial airliners. Note that none of the replicas has a mass precisely equal to that of the IPK, their masses are calibrated and documented as offset values. For instance, K20, the U.S.'s primary standard, originally had an official mass of 1 kg minus 39 micrograms in 1889, that is to say, K20 was 39 micrograms less than the IPK. A verification performed in 1948 showed a mass of 1 kg minus 19 micrograms. 
The latest verification performed in 1989 shows a mass precisely identical to its original 1889 value. Quite unlike transient variations such as this, the U.S.'s Czech standard, K4, has persistently declined in mass relative to the IPK. And for an identifiable reason, Czech standards are used much more often than primary standards and are prone to scratches and other wear. K4 was originally delivered with an official mass of 1 kg-75 micrograms in 1889, but as of 1989 was officially calibrated at 1 kg-106 micrograms and 10 years later was 1 kg-116 micrograms. Over a period of 110 years, K4 lost 41 micrograms relative to the IPK. Beyond the simple wear that Czech standards can experience, the mass of even the carefully stored national prototypes can drift relative to the IPK for a variety of reasons, some known and some unknown. Since the IPK and its replicas are stored in air albeit under two or more nested bell jars, they gain mass through adsorption of atmospheric contamination onto their surfaces. Accordingly, they are cleaned in a process the BIPM developed between 1939 and 1946 known as the BIPM cleaning method, that comprises firmly rubbing with a chamois soaked in equal parts ether and ethanol, followed by steam cleaning with bi-distilled water, and allowing the prototypes to settle for 7 to 10 days before verification. Before the BIPM's published report in 1994 detailing the relative change in mass of the prototypes, different standard bodies used different techniques to clean their prototypes. The NIST's practice before then was to soak and rinse its two prototypes first in benzene, then in ethanol, and to then clean them with a jet of bi-distilled water steam. Cleaning the prototypes removes between 5 and 60 micrograms of contamination depending largely on the time elapsed since the last cleaning. Further, a second cleaning can remove up to 10 micrograms more. After cleaning, even when they are stored under their bell jars, the IPK and its replicas immediately begin gaining mass again. The BIPM even developed a model of this gain and concluded that it averaged 1.11 micrograms per month for the first three months after cleaning and then decreased to an average of about 1 microgram per year thereafter. Since Czech standards like K4 are not cleaned for routine calibrations of other mass standards, a precaution to minimize the potential for wear and handling damage, the BIPM's model of time-dependent mass gain has been used as an after-cleaning correction factor. Because the first 40 official copies are made of the same alloy as the IPK and are stored under similar conditions, periodic verifications using a large number of replicas, especially the national primary standards, which are rarely used, can convincingly demonstrate the stability of the IPK. What has become clear after the third periodic verification performed between 1988 and 1992 is that masses of the entire worldwide ensemble of prototypes have been slowly but inexorably diverging from each other. It is also clear that the mass of the IPK lost perhaps 50 micrograms over the last century, and possibly significantly more, in comparison to its official copies. The reason for this drift has eluded physicists who have dedicated their careers to the SI unit of mass. No plausible mechanism has been proposed to explain either a steady decrease in the mass of the IPK, or an increase in that of its replicas dispersed throughout the world. Moreover, there are no technical means available to determine whether or not the entire worldwide ensemble of prototypes suffers from even greater long-term trends upwards or downwards because their mass, relative to an invariant of nature is unknown at a level below 1,000 micrograms over a period of 100 or even 50 years. Given the lack of data identifying which of the world's kilogram prototypes has been most stable in absolute terms, it is equally valid to state that the first batch of replicas has, as a group, gained an average of about 25 micrograms over 100 years in comparison to the IPK. What is known specifically about the IPK is that it exhibits a short-term instability of about 30 micrograms over a period of about a month in its after-cleaned mass. The precise reason for this short-term instability is not understood but is thought to entail surface effects, microscopic differences between the prototype's polished surfaces, possibly aggravated by hydrogen absorption due to catalysis of the volatile organic compounds that slowly deposit onto the prototypes as well as the hydrocarbon-based solvents used to clean them. It has been possible to rule out many explanations of the observed divergences in the masses of the world's prototypes proposed by scientists and the general public. 
The BIPM's FAQ explains, for example, that the divergence is dependent on the amount of time elapsed between measurements and not dependent on the number of times the prototype or its copies have been cleaned or possible changes in gravity or environment. Reports published in 2013 by Peter Cumpson of Newcastle University based on the X-ray photoelectron spectroscopy of samples that were stored alongside various prototype kilograms suggested that one source of the divergence between the various prototypes could be traced to mercury that had been absorbed by the prototypes being in the proximity of mercury-based instruments. The IPK has been stored within centimeters of a mercury thermometer since at least as far back as the late 1980s. In this Newcastle University work, six platinum weights made in the 19th century were all found to have mercury at the surface, the most contaminated of which had the equivalent of 250 micrograms of mercury when scaled to the surface area of a kilogram prototype. Scientists are seeing far greater variability in the prototypes than previously believed. The increasing divergence in the masses of the world's prototypes and the short-term instability in the IPK has prompted research into improved methods to obtain a smooth surface finish using diamond turning on newly manufactured replicas and was one of the reasons that led to the redefinition of the kilogram. See section redefinition agreed on 16 November 2018, below. Topic. Dependency of the SI on the IPK The stability of the IPK is crucial because the kilogram underpins much of the SI system of measurement as it is currently defined and structured. For instance, the Newton is defined as the force necessary to accelerate 1 kg at 1 m per second squared. If the mass of the IPK were to change slightly then the Newton would also change proportionally. In turn, the Pascal, the SI unit of pressure, is defined in terms of the Newton. This chain of dependency follows to many other SI units of measure. For instance, the Joule, the SI unit of energy, is defined as that expended when a force of 1 Newton acts through 1 meter. Next to be affected is the SI unit of power, the Watt, which is 1 Joule per second. The Ampere too is defined relative to the Newton. With the magnitude of the primary units of electricity thus determined by the kilogram, so too follow many others, namely the Coulomb, Volt, Tesla, and Weber. Even units used in the measure of light would be affected, the candela, following the change in the watt, would in turn affect the lumen and lux. Because the magnitude of many of the units comprising the SI system of measurement is ultimately defined by the mass of a 139-year-old, golf ball-sized piece of metal, the quality of the IPK must be diligently protected to preserve the integrity of the SI system. Yet, despite the best stewardship, the average mass of the worldwide ensemble of prototypes and the mass of the IPK have likely diverged another 6.9 micrograms since the third periodic verification 29 years ago. Further, the world's national metrology laboratories must wait for the fourth periodic verification to confirm whether the historical trends persisted. Fortunately, definitions of the SI units are quite different from their practical realizations. For instance, the meter is defined as the distance light travels in a vacuum during a time interval of 1 1,299,792,458 of a second. However, the meter's practical realization typically takes the form of a helium neon laser, and the meter's length is delineated not defined as 1,579,800.298728 wavelengths of light from this laser. Now suppose that the official measurement of the second was found to have drifted by a few parts per billion, it is actually extremely stable with a reproducibility of a few parts in 1015. There would be no automatic effect on the meter because the second, and thus the meter's length, is abstracted via the laser comprising the meter's practical realization. Scientists performing meter calibrations would simply continue to measure out the same number of laser wavelengths until an agreement was reached to do otherwise. The same is true with regard to the real-world dependency on the kilogram. If the mass of the IPK was found to have changed slightly, there would be no automatic effect upon the other units of measure because their practical realizations provide an insulating layer of abstraction. Any discrepancy would eventually have to be reconciled though, because the virtue of the SI system is its precise mathematical and logical harmony amongst its units. 
If the IPK's value were definitively proven to have changed, one solution would be to simply redefine the kilogram as being equal to the mass of the IPK plus an offset value, similarly to what is currently done with its replicas, e.g., the kilogram is equal to the mass of the IPK plus 42 parts per billion, equivalent to 42 micrograms. The long-term solution to this problem, however, is to liberate the SI system's dependency on the IPK by developing a practical realization of the kilogram that can be reproduced in different laboratories by following a written specification. The units of measure in such a practical realization would have their magnitudes precisely defined and expressed in terms of fundamental physical constants. While major portions of the SI system would still be based on the kilogram, the kilogram would in turn be based on invariant, universal constants of nature. <laughs> Redefinition agreed on 16 November 2018 The International Committee for Weights and Measures CIPM approved a proposed redefinition of SI base units in November 2018 that defines the kilogram by defining the Planck constant to be exactly 6.62607015 times 10 minus 34 kilograms M2S minus 1. This approach effectively defines the kilogram in terms of the second and the meter, and will take effect in 2019. Topic. History of redefinition Prior to the redefinition the kilogram, and several other SI units based on the kilogram, were defined by a man-made metal artifact, the Kilogram Day Archives from 1799 to 1889, and the International Prototype Kilogram from 1889 onward. In 1960, the meter, previously similarly having been defined with reference to a single platinum iridium bar with two marks on it, was redefined in terms of an invariant physical constant the wavelength of a particular emission of light emitted by krypton, and later the speed of light so that the standard can be independently reproduced in different laboratories by following a written specification. At the 94th meeting of the International Committee for Weights and Measures CIPM in 2005, it was recommended that the same be done with the kilogram. In October 2010, the CIPM voted to submit a resolution for consideration at the General Conference on Weights and Measures CGPM to take note of an intention that the kilogram be defined in terms of the Planck constant H, which has dimensions of energy times time, together with other physical constants. This resolution was accepted by the 24th Conference of the CGPM in October 2011 and further discussed at the 25th Conference in 2014. Although the committee recognized that significant progress had been made, they concluded that the data did not yet appear sufficiently robust to adopt the revised definition, and that work should continue to enable the adoption at the 26th meeting, scheduled for 2018. Such a definition would theoretically permit any apparatus that was capable of delineating the kilogram in terms of the Planck constant to be used as long as it possessed sufficient precision, accuracy and stability. The Kibble balance discussed below is one way do this. As part of this project, a variety of very different technologies and approaches were considered and explored over many years. They too are covered below. Some of these now abandoned approaches were based on equipment and procedures that would have enabled the reproducible production of new, kilogram mass prototypes on demand albeit with extraordinary effort using measurement techniques and material properties that are ultimately based on, or traceable to, physical constants. Others were based on devices that measured either the acceleration or weight of hand-tuned kilogram test masses and which expressed their magnitudes in electrical terms via special components that permit traceability to physical constants. All approaches depend on converting a weight measurement to a mass, and therefore require the precise measurement of the strength of gravity in laboratories. All approaches would have precisely fixed one or more constants of nature at a defined value. Kibble balance The Kibble balance, known as a Watt balance, before 2016, is essentially a single pan weighing scale that measures the electric power necessary to oppose the weight of a kilogram test mass as it is pulled by Earth's gravity. It is a variation of an ampere balance, with an extra calibration step that eliminates the effect of geometry. 
The electric potential in the Kibble balance is delineated by a Josephson voltage standard, which allows voltage to be linked to an invariant constant of nature with extremely high precision and stability. Its circuit resistance is calibrated against a quantum Hall effect resistance standard. The Kibble balance requires extremely precise measurement of the local gravitational acceleration g in the laboratory, using a gravimeter. For instance when the elevation of the center of the gravimeter differs from that of the nearby test mass in the Kibble balance, the NIST compensates for Earth's gravity gradient of 309 mg gal per meter, which affects the weight of a 1 kg test mass by about 316 micrograms per meter. In April 2007, the NIST's implementation of the Kibble balance demonstrated a combined relative standard uncertainty of 36 micrograms. The UK's National Physical Laboratory's Kibble balance demonstrated a CRSU of 70.3 micrograms in 2007. That Kibble balance was disassembled and shipped in 2009 to Canada's Institute for National Measurement Standards part of the National Research Council, where research and development with the device could continue. Gravity and the nature of the Kibble balance, which oscillates test masses up and down against the local gravitational acceleration g, are exploited so that mechanical power is compared against electrical power, which is the square of voltage divided by electrical resistance. However, g varies significantly by nearly 1% depending on where on the Earth's surface the measurement is made. See Earth's gravity. There are also slight seasonal variations in G at a location due to changes in underground water tables, and larger semi-monthly and diurnal changes due to tidal distortions in the Earth's shape caused by the Moon and the Sun. Although G would not be a term in the definition of the kilogram, it would be crucial in the process of measurement of the kilogram when relating energy to power. Accordingly, G must be measured with at least as much precision and accuracy as are the other terms, so measurements of G must also be traceable to fundamental constants of nature. For the most precise work in mass metrology, G is measured using dropping mass absolute gravimeters that contain an iodine-stabilized helium-neon laser interferometer. The fringe signal, frequency sweep output from the interferometer is measured with a rubidium atomic clock. Since this type of dropping mass gravimeter derives its accuracy and stability from the constancy of the speed of light as well as the innate properties of helium, neon, and rubidium atoms, the gravity term in the delineation of an all-electronic kilogram is also measured in terms of invariance of nature, and with very high precision. For instance, in the basement of the NIST's Gaithersburg facility in 2009, when measuring the gravity acting upon PT-10IR test masses which are denser, smaller, and have a slightly lower center of gravity inside the Kibble balance than stainless steel masses, the measured value was typically within 8 ppb of 9.8010164 m per square second. The virtue of electronic realizations like the Kibble balance is that the definition and dissemination of the kilogram would no longer be dependent upon the stability of kilogram prototypes, which must be very carefully handled and stored. It would free physicists from the need to rely on assumptions about the stability of those prototypes. Instead, hand-tuned, close approximation mass standards would simply be weighed and documented as being equal to 1 kilogram plus an offset value. With the Kibble balance, while the kilogram would be delineated in electrical and gravity terms, all of which are traceable to invariance of nature, it would be defined in a manner that is directly traceable to three fundamental constants of nature. The Planck constant defines the kilogram in terms of the second and the meter. By fixing the Planck constant, the definition of the kilogram would in addition depend only on the definitions of the second and the meter. The definition of the second depends on a single defined physical constant, the ground state hyperfine splitting frequency of the cesium-133 atom dn HFS. The meter depends on the second and on an additional defined physical constant, the speed of light c. Once the kilogram is redefined in this manner, physical objects such as the IPK will no longer be part of the definition, but will instead become transfer standards. Scales like the Kibble balance also permit more flexibility in choosing materials with especially desirable properties for mass standards. For instance, PT-10IR could continue to be used so that the specific gravity of newly produced mass standards would be the same as existing national primary and check standards approximately equals 21.55 grams per milliliter. This would reduce the relative uncertainty when making mass comparisons in air. 
Alternatively, entirely different materials and constructions could be explored with the objective of producing mass standards with greater stability. For instance, osmium iridium alloys could be investigated if platinum's propensity to absorb hydrogen due to catalysis of Vox and hydrocarbon-based cleaning solvents and atmospheric mercury proved to be sources of instability. Also, vapor deposited, protective ceramic coatings like nitrides could be investigated for their suitability for chemically isolating these new alloys. The challenge with kibble balances is not only in reducing their uncertainty, but also in making them truly practical realizations of the kilogram. Nearly every aspect of kibble balances and their support equipment requires such extraordinarily precise and accurate, state-of-the-art technology that, unlike a device like an atomic clock, few countries would currently choose to fund their operation. For instance, the NIST's kibble balance used four resistance standards in 2007, each of which was rotated through the kibble balance every two to six weeks after being calibrated in a different part of NIST headquarters facility in Gaithersburg, Maryland. It was found that simply moving the resistance standards down the hall to the kibble balance after calibration altered their values 10 ppb equivalent to 10 micrograms or more. Present-day technology is insufficient to permit stable operation of kibble balances between even biannual calibrations. When the new definition takes effect, it is likely there will only be a few—at most—kibble balances initially operating in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Alternative approaches to redefining the kilogram Several alternative approaches to redefining the kilogram that were fundamentally different from the kibble balance were explored to varying degrees, with some abandoned. The Avogadro project, in particular, was important for the 2018 redefinition decision because it provided an accurate measurement of the Planck constant that was consistent with and independent of the kibble balance method. The alternative approaches included <laughs> Atom counting approaches. Avogadro project Another Avogadro constant-based approach, known as the International Avogadro Coordination's Avogadro project, would define and delineate the kilogram as a 93.6 mm diameter sphere of silicon atoms. Silicon was chosen because a commercial infrastructure with mature processes for creating defect-free, ultra-pure monocrystalline silicon already exists to service the semiconductor industry. To make a practical realization of the kilogram, a silicon boule a rod -like, single crystal ingot would be produced. Its isotopic composition would be measured with a mass spectrometer to determine its average relative atomic mass. The boule would be cut, ground, and polished into spheres. The size of a select sphere would be measured using optical interferometry to an uncertainty of about 0.3 nm on the radius—roughly a single atomic layer. The precise lattice spacing between the atoms in its crystal structure approximately equals 192 pm would be measured using a scanning X-ray interferometer. This permits its atomic spacing to be determined with an uncertainty of only 3 parts per billion. With the size of the sphere, its average atomic mass, and its atomic spacing known, the required sphere diameter can be calculated with sufficient precision and low uncertainty to enable it to be finish polished to a target mass of 1 kg. Experiments are being performed on the Avogadro project's silicon spheres to determine whether their masses are most stable when stored in a vacuum, a partial vacuum, or ambient pressure. However, no technical means currently exist to prove a long-term stability any better than that of the IPKs, because the most sensitive and accurate measurements of mass are made with dual pan balances like the BIPM's FB2 flexure strip balance see section external links, below. Balances can only compare the mass of a silicon sphere to that of a reference mass. Given the latest understanding of the lack of long-term mass stability with the IPK and its replicas, there is no known, perfectly stable mass artifact to compare against. Single pan scales, which measure weight relative to an invariant of nature, are not precise to the necessary long-term uncertainty of 10 to 20 parts per billion. Another issue to be overcome is that silicon oxidizes and forms a thin layer equivalent to 5 to 20 silicon atoms deep of silicon dioxide quartz and silicon monoxide. 
This layer slightly increases the mass of the sphere, an effect that must be accounted for when polishing the sphere to its finished size. Oxidation is not an issue with platinum and iridium, both of which are noble metals that are roughly as cathodic as oxygen and therefore don't oxidize unless coaxed to do so in the laboratory. The presence of the thin oxide layer on a silicon sphere mass prototype places additional restrictions on the procedures that might be suitable to clean it to avoid changing the layer's thickness or oxide stoichiometry. All silicon-based approaches would fix the Avogadro constant but vary in the details of the definition of the kilogram. One approach would use silicon with all three of its natural isotopes present. About 7.78% of silicon comprises the two heavier isotopes, 29C and 30C. As described in section carbon-12 above, this method would define the magnitude of the kilogram in terms of a certain number of 12C atoms by fixing the Avogadro constant, the silicon sphere would be the practical realization. This approach could accurately delineate the magnitude of the kilogram because the masses of the three silicon nuclides relative to 12C are known with great precision relative uncertainties of 1 ppb or better. An alternative method for creating a silicon sphere-based kilogram proposes to use isotopic separation techniques to enrich the silicon until it is nearly pure 28C, which has a relative atomic mass of 27.9769265325 19. With this approach, the Avogadro constant would not only be fixed, but so too would the atomic mass of 28C. As such, the definition of the kilogram would be decoupled from 12C and the kilogram would instead be defined as 1027.9769265325 times 10^23 atoms of 28C approximately equals 35.7437404 fixed moles of 28C atoms. Physicists could elect to define the kilogram in terms of 28C even when kilogram prototypes are made of natural silicon all three isotopes present. Even with a kilogram definition based on theoretically pure 28C, a silicon sphere prototype made of only nearly pure 28C would necessarily deviate slightly from the defined number of moles of silicon to compensate for various chemical and isotopic impurities as well as the effect of surface oxides. Topic. Carbon-12 Though not offering a practical realization, this definition would precisely define the magnitude of the kilogram in terms of a certain number of carbon-12 atoms. Carbon-12 12C is an isotope of carbon. The mole is currently defined as the quantity of entities elementary particles like atoms or molecules equal to the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon-12. Thus, the current definition of the mole requires that 1,012 of a mole 83 and a third moles of 12 C has a mass of precisely 1 kg. The number of atoms in a mole, a quantity known as the Avogadro constant, is experimentally determined, and the current best estimate of its value is 6.022140857 times 1023 entities per mole. This new definition of the kilogram proposed to fix the Avogadro constant at precisely 6.02214 x times 1023 moles minus 1 with the kilogram being defined as the mass equal to that of 1012 6.02214 x times 1023 atoms of 12 c. The accuracy of the measured value of the Avogadro constant is currently limited by the uncertainty in the value of the Planck constant. That relative standard uncertainty has been 50 parts per billion ppb since 2006. By fixing the Avogadro constant, the practical effect of this proposal would be that the uncertainty in the mass of a 12 C atom and the magnitude of the kilogram could be no better than the current 50 ppb uncertainty in the Planck constant. Under this proposal, the magnitude of the kilogram would be subject to future refinement as improved measurements of the value of the Planck constant become available, electronic realizations of the kilogram would be recalibrated as required. Conversely, an electronic definition of the kilogram see section electronic approaches, below, which would precisely fix the Planck constant, would continue to allow 83 and a third moles of 12 C to have a mass of precisely 1 kilogram but the number of atoms comprising a mole the Avogadro constant would continue to be subject to future refinement. 
A variation on a 12C based definition proposes to define the Avogadro constant as being precisely 844,468,893, approximately equals 6.0221416210 times 1023 atoms. An imaginary realization of a 12 gram mass prototype would be a cube of 12 C atoms measuring precisely 84,446,889 atoms across on a side. With this proposal, the kilogram would be defined as the mass equal to 844,468,893 times 83 and a third atoms of 12 C. Topic ion accumulation Another Avogadro-based approach, ion accumulation, since abandoned, would have defined and delineated the kilogram by precisely creating new metal prototypes on demand. It would have done so by accumulating gold or bismuth ions atoms stripped of an electron and counting them by measuring the electric current required to neutralize the ions. Gold and bismuth were chosen because they can be safely handled and have the two highest atomic masses among the mononucleidic elements that are stable gold or effectively so bismuth. See also Table of Nuclides. With a gold-based definition of the kilogram for instance, the relative atomic mass of gold could have been fixed as precisely 196.9665687, from the current value of 196.9665687 As with a definition based upon carbon-12, the Avogadro constant would also have been fixed. The kilogram would then have been defined as the mass equal to that of precisely 1196.9665687 times 10^23 atoms of gold precisely 3 septillion 57 sextillion 443 quintillion 620 quadrillion 887 trillion 933 billion 963 million 384,315 atoms of gold or about 5.0770371 fixed moles. In 2003, German experiments with gold at a current of only 10 microamperes demonstrated a relative uncertainty of 1.5%. Follow-on experiments using bismuth ions and a current of 30 milliamperes were expected to accumulate a mass of 30 grams in 6 days and to have a relative uncertainty of better than 1 ppm. Ultimately, ion accumulation approaches proved to be unsuitable. Measurements required months and the data proved too erratic for the technique to be considered a viable future replacement to the IPK. Among the many technical challenges of the ion deposition apparatus was obtaining a sufficiently high ion current mass deposition rate while simultaneously decelerating the ions so they could all deposit onto a target electrode embedded in a balance pan. Experiments with gold showed the ions had to be decelerated to very low energies to avoid sputtering effects, a phenomenon whereby ions that had already been counted ricochet off the target electrode or even dislodged atoms that had already been deposited. The deposited mass fraction in the 2003 German experiments only approached very close to 100% at ion energies of less than around 1 electron volt beyond the slowness of making a new mass standard and the poor reproducibility. There were other intrinsic shortcomings to the ion accumulation approach that proved to be formidable obstacles to ion accumulation based techniques becoming a practical realization. The apparatus necessarily required that the deposition chamber have an integral balance system to enable the convenient calibration of a reasonable quantity of transfer standards relative to any single internal ion deposited prototype. Furthermore, the mass prototypes produced by ion deposition techniques would have been nothing like the freestanding platinum iridium prototypes currently in use, they would have been deposited onto and become part of an electrode embedded into one pan of a special balance integrated into the device. Moreover, the ion deposited mass wouldn't have had a hard, highly polished surface that can be vigorously cleaned like those of current prototypes. Gold, while dense and a noble metal resistant to oxidation and the formation of other compounds, is extremely soft so an internal gold prototype would have to be kept well isolated and scrupulously clean to avoid contamination and the potential of wear from having to remove the contamination. Bismuth, which is an inexpensive metal used in low-temperature solders, slowly oxidizes when exposed to room-temperature air and forms other chemical compounds and so would not have produced stable reference masses unless it was continually maintained in a vacuum or inert atmosphere. Topic. 
Ampere-based force This approach would define the kilogram as the mass which would be accelerated at precisely 2 times 10 minus 7 meters per square second when subjected to the per meter force between two straight parallel conductors of infinite length, of negligible circular cross section, placed 1 meter apart in vacuum, through which flow a constant current of 1 over 1, 60217x times 10 carat minus 19 elementary charges per second. Effectively, this would define the kilogram as a derivative of the ampere rather than the present relationship, which defines the ampere as a derivative of the kilogram. This redefinition of the kilogram would specify elementary charge e as precisely 1.60217 x times 10 caret minus 19 coulomb rather than the current recommended value of 1.60217662098 98 times 10 minus 19 c. It would necessarily follow that the ampere 1 coulomb per second would also become an electric current of this precise quantity of elementary charges per second passing a given point in an electric circuit. The virtue of a practical realization based upon this definition is that unlike the Kibble balance and other scale-based methods, all of which require the careful characterization of gravity in the laboratory, this method delineates the magnitude of the kilogram directly in the very terms that define the nature of mass, acceleration due to an applied force. Unfortunately, it is extremely difficult to develop a practical realization based upon accelerating masses. Experiments over a period of years in Japan with a superconducting, 30 g mass supported by diamagnetic levitation never achieved an uncertainty better than 10 parts per million. Magnetic hysteresis was one of the limiting issues. Other groups performed similar research that used different techniques to levitate the mass. <laughs> SI multiples. Because SI prefixes may not be concatenated serially linked within the name or symbol for a unit of measure, SI prefixes are used with the unit gram, not kilogram, which already has a prefix as part of its name. For instance, one millionth of a kilogram is one milligram, one milligram not one mu kilogram, one microkilogram. The microgram is typically abbreviated MCG. in pharmaceutical and nutritional supplement labeling, to avoid confusion, since the mu Prefix is not always well recognized outside of technical disciplines. The expression MCG is also the symbol for an obsolete CGS unit of measure known as the millicentigram, which is equal to 10 micrograms. In the United Kingdom, because serious medication errors have been made from the confusion between milligrams and micrograms when micrograms has been abbreviated, the recommendation given in the Scottish Palliative Care Guidelines is that doses of less than 1 milligram must be expressed in micrograms and that the word microgram must be written in full, and that it is never acceptable to use MCG or MUG to the hectogram is a very commonly used unit in the retail food trade in Italy, usually called an etta, short for etagrammo, the Italian for hectogram. The former standard spelling and abbreviation, deca, and dk, produced abbreviations such as dkm, decameter, and dkg, decagram. The abbreviation, dkg, is still used in parts of Central Europe in retail for some foods such as cheese and meat. The unit name megagram is rarely used, and even then typically only in technical fields in contexts where especially rigorous consistency with the SI standard is desired. For most purposes, the name ton is instead used. The ton and its symbol, T, were adopted by the CIPM in 1879. It is a non-SI unit accepted by the BIPM for use with the SI. According to the BIPM, in English-speaking countries this unit is usually called metric ton. The unit name megaton or megaton MT is often used in general interest literature on greenhouse gas emissions, whereas the equivalent unit in scientific papers on the subject is often the teragram TG. See also Notes <laughs>